During the first half of the 20th century, a scientific epoch unparalleled in history was unfolding in physics. This concerns the nature of matter. We have Einstein publishing his special theory of relativity in 1905, but at the same year, he also published a paper analyzing Brownian motion, the seemingly random motion of small, suspended particles in air and water, proving the existence of atoms in the process. A few years later, in 1911, Rutherford announced the results of his gold foil experiments, where he discovered that an atom is mostly empty space, and that almost all its mass is concentrated at the center. He called it the nucleus of an atom. To probe through the nucleus of an atom, they must hit it with something with enough energy to temporarily, or permanently, break it. The particles they will first use to probe the nucleus of an atom will, ironically, come from nuclei that emits particles as they decay. This phenomenon of the decay of the nucleus that involves emission of a particle is called radioactivity. Certain materials contain radioactive nuclei. The first one was discovered by Becquerel in the 1890s, when he accidentally left uranium salts near a well-covered photographic plate. Pierre and especially Marie Curie further investigated radioactivity, leading to their discovery of new radioactive elements radium and polonium. Rutherford will use radium in his gold foil experiments. Scientists will soon discover that the nucleus of an atom is an aggregation of two particles, the proton and the neutron. The proton is positively charged, while the neutron has no electric charge. Altogether, they make the nucleus positively charged. This is in contrast with the electron, which is negatively charged. As a positive charge attracts a negative charge, physicists expect this atom to collapse, which is not the case. Their attempts to resolve this paradox led to the development of quantum mechanics. They have also discovered that the chemical properties of the elements depend solely on the number of the protons in the nuclei of its atoms. This is because for a neutral atom, the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons. The number of electrons then serve to dictate not just its chemical properties, but also physical properties. It is also possible for a single element to have atoms with different number of neutrons. These variants that differ in the number of neutrons but have the same number of protons are called isotopes. Hydrogen has three isotopes. Protium, with a single proton in the nucleus, deuterium, with a proton and a neutron in the nucleus, and tritium, with a proton and two neutrons in the nucleus. Another paradox exists, which now involves the nucleus. Two positive charges repel, yet protons are, most of the time, tightly bound in close contact within the nucleus. In their quest to discover how this is possible will lead them to uncover the conditions where a nucleus remains stable or not, decaying to a more stable form. Materials that are made up of elements that have unstable nuclei, or what is called radioactive nuclei, exhibit an interesting chemical behavior. The percentage makeup of the original element decreases over time in an interesting fashion. The radioactive material has its own so-called half-life. The period where its composition is halved due to its radioactive decay, transmuting to a different element. After one half-life, one half of the original material remains. After another half-life, only one-fourth remains. After the third half-life, only one-eighth remains. The shorter the half-life, the stronger its radiation is. For some radioactive materials, their radiation can be sufficiently strong that they glow in the dark. This fact was the reason that radium was once used in the dials of the glow-in-the-dark clocks. One of the main thrusts of investigations surrounding the nucleus involve inducing their decay with particles such as neutrons. Some nuclei, when induced to decay, release energy in the process. In 1938, an important breakthrough came. Otto Hahn and his team managed not just to induce a decay, but also split a certain isotope of uranium called uranium-235. They split it using neutrons hitting the nuclei of their sample. The split not only generated two smaller nuclei, but also produced three neutrons that can hit the adjacent nuclei in the sample. In their calculations, they concluded that a nuclear chain reaction is possible. Even more so, if this chain reaction occurs in a split second, it will emit even more energy in much, much faster time. Perhaps this amount of energy may be released as a concentrated energy in the form of heat and light, swallowing everything around it in the process.